I've got 10 different fragrances here. Five of them were blind by successes. I'd say we scored a touchdown. And the other five, not so much. So we're gonna start it off with a blind buy that I love. Jean-Paul Gaultier Le Mau, or Le Beau Le Parfum. This is creamy, sexy, coconut, pineapple goodness. This is very uh, spring, summertime, I'm leaning more into the springtime, but uh, it, you know, you can wear it whenever. It, it's really something absolutely magical. This stuff is just, oh, it's creamy, it's woody, it's so elegant. It lasts actually for quite some time too. So it is a very pleasant overall, beautiful scent. I, I really do love this stuff. It has such a um, creamy, everyday, sexy appeal to it. It's almost like a more mature, woody pina colada, but in such a sexy way. Every designer fragrance that's getting released now pretty much smells something like this. So the DNA is very present in most perfumes nowadays. So it's nothing like extraordinarily unique. You're not gonna like blow the socks off somebody, but um, for somebody who's wearing fragrances to be like discovered or to like walk into a room and you're like, wow, he smells great. It does that, it, it's amazing. It smells so good, so classy and also sweet too. So if you're not into sweet fragrances, by any means don't buy it, but uh, it has a just a beautiful scent to it. It really truly does. All right, so the next one is one that I, I wasn't a fan of and I'm still really not a fan of this one. Uh, and I blind bought it and I thought I was really gonna like it. So when I first initially bought this one, I was pretty pretty sure I was gonna like it. And this is Oud for Glory. And so I'm very vocal here on the channel. I'm gonna dial it back a little bit, but I'm very vocal that I don't really like this fragrance all that much. Um, it just has kind of a, so it's very Oud centric. It's very Oud dominant. It has a kind of a, uh, more synthetic oud. I tried it against the original, and the original has like this dirty, earthy oud to it. And this one, it's a little bit more pleasant than, than, than the original, but it's mainly a woody dominant fragrance, and it's a dark woods. It's also balanced out with some saffron and some sweet aspects in here, and there's also patchouli in here, and the patchouli is very dark. It's very rich. Um, so it, it comes across a little, earthy, dirty, flowery kind of thing. But overall, it's not for me. And um, this one was definitely a fail blind buy. A lot of people do love it and it's very dark, rich wood. So if you're into that sort of thing, try it out. It's like 25 bucks. That takes us into number three. And you know, not all ouds are the same. And this is a great example of that. This is Honey A Oud by Montal. And this is so splendid. This, this is, a perfect example of oud fragrances done right. So this one has honey in there to really kind of balance out that oud, um, but it, it comes across as a sweet, woody, dark fragrance. So it kind of has the same oud as oud for glory, but in such a more well-rounded aspect. And I, I feel like it's just the sweetness. It, it's kind of like the analogy I would put on this is like dark coffee or like roasted coffee. Not everybody gets on the bandwagon of having, um, you know, black coffee, very bitter, bold coffee. But some people like to have some sugar in there, some cream, water it down a little bit. And that is a great example of Honey A Oud. It's like the vanilla latte of ouds. It's pleasant, but it's watered down with all that sweetness, the, the just amazingness. Very good stuff here. If you live in a cooler climate, this is a must try. Going right into the next one, this one was a total complete fail. Blind buy fail. And the reason I say that, it's super synthetic. And I know that's a trigger word for a lot of people about having a fragrance that's synthetic. This one does really well in like the gym environment or maybe getting out of the shower and spraying it on right before bed or just smelling fresh and clean. The shower gel fragrance, this is Hugo Reverse. This one gets heavily hyped up online and um, a lot of people say that it's compared to Elysium and all that stuff. But the main aspect with this one is it's very synthetic um, and it's a good gym fragrance. I use it for the gym all the time. I shouldn't say I hate this fragrance and I don't by any means, I don't hate any fragrance, but I don't hate this fragrance. 
It does a really good job for an everyday throw on scent. It's a great hiking fragrance. It's a great gym fragrance. It's a very good go to the grocery store fragrance, but um, I would never wear this as a signature scent or a, if I'm looking at my fragrance wardrobe, I'm, I would never say, I'm gonna wear Hugo Reverse today. It would just never come out of my mouth. This is one of those fragrances that if it's around, I'll spray it on to go do random things. But it, but for the most part, this is not something I'm laying in bed at night and be like, you know what, tomorrow I'm gonna wear Hugo Reversed. It's just not gonna happen. This next one was a little sketchy for me to buy because it was quite expensive. This was a blind buy niche fragrance and I would not suggest you blind buy niche fragrances unless they don't have testers, unless they don't have samplers. Uh, it's a little risky. It's very risky because uh, perfume is such an art and it's such an art form on its own of like mixing different ingredients to get different aspects and different nuances. And so it's a, it can be very challenging for a lot of people. A lot of people have some amazing thoughts on what a fragrance could be. And some of these niche brands out there have such a creative um, inspiration for fragrances that might be out of the total norm for an everyday guy like you and me. So, um, but this is Nishone, this is Annie. And this was a um, recommendation from uh, a lot of people on my channel here. I love vanilla fragrances, absolutely. And um, you know, so I looked into it and I decided to pull the trigger. I paid right around 100, 110 bucks for this and it's a little 50 mil. So it is on the pricier side. Do not regret it in the slightest. This was a blind buy success to say the least because um, this one has, it's heavy on the vanilla, heavy on the benzoin and heavy on the cedar aspect. So it's a rich woods, rich, warm, creamy vanilla. Um, it, it smells like chocolate chip cookies, but you got some like, you know, heavy deep woods in there. It's an overall pleasant scent, but just know what you're buying. You're buying a vanilla fragrance and vanilla can be looked at as kind of a feminine kind of scent profile. Just be warned of that. This doesn't really lean feminine. I think this is borderline the unisex, um, but I'm simply in love with it. It's such a good fragrance. And I only wear this really for um, like special occasions or when I'm having like, you know, a, a nice, beautiful day. I'm wearing Nishane Annie. The next one on the list, and this one is a blind buy fail. Um, you know, I'm still kind of warming up to it. Um, so I, I don't know exactly if I'm gonna love this one more or just, I don't know, but I don't get heavy on mint. Mint is one of the fragrance notes that really doesn't sit all that well with me. I can do a little bit of mint, like in Chanel's Allure Homme Sport Eau Extreme, I love the mint in there. It doesn't come across too cloying, too overly done, but mint can have like that menthol cigarette kind of vibe to it. With that being said, I, you know, I could be just, you know, needing to wear it a little bit more, but this is Enclosure. And um, this is a take on Inclov, I think it is, by um, Amouage. And I saw it on fragrancebuy.ca and I was ordering, like I do, I was ordering a bunch of fragrances and I saw it for like 20 bucks. And I needed that fifth fragrance to kind of get the free shipping. And you know, I think everyone does that, but uh, I ordered it and then I looked it up afterwards and I was like, oh no, this has a lot of mint in it. So hopefully I like it. Um, it's really hard to wear. Um, so, but it's really interesting. So this one is like a fresh, um, it's like a fresh pack of gum with some spice in there. So imagine like a spicy fragrance, you're wearing a spicy fragrance and chewing a pack of spearmint gum. That's what this does. So you're wearing like a heavy, spicy Middle Eastern fragrance but you're chewing some gum. That's pretty much what it does. A lot of people love this. And so don't get me confused here. This is a really good fragrance. I just don't get on the mint train. Um, I just don't get on the mint vibe, um, but uh, it is very pleasant. It's a very good scent. It's just hard for me to wear because I don't really get on the mint bandwagon all that much. All right, so the next one, this one is one that I love. This is a one that was an amazing blind buy and I'm really glad I picked it up. This was actually a recommendation from a subscriber. So if you have any recommendations for me, 
please let me know in the comments. I love to check out new formulations, new fragrances. It's always my hobby. So um, this is Ambassador Intense, and this is a take on Dior Sauvage Elixir. It's spicy, it's aromatic, it's super splendid, and it's super sexy too. I didn't know if I was gonna like this one all that much, but man, oh man, do I love it. The main things you're gonna pick up this with this one is a lot of spicy and a lot of sexiness, of course. Um, but it's pretty much Dior Sauvage Elixir repurposed. This one would probably be a very good, easy, everyday wear. It's um, it's kind of sexy. It's, it's sp sexy, spicy. So just be warned of that if you're looking into getting like a daily driver. But this was a blind buy for me, blind buy success. The next two are gonna be the blind buys that didn't really work out. And then the last one is gonna be the blind buy that really worked out well for me. So this is Jet Black Reserve. All right, so this one is not a bad fragrance. It is really not. It actually is really sexy. It's dry, it's a little medicinal, and it's, uh, it's, it's got a lot of spicy aspects to it. The only thing with this one is it's so soft. <laughs> this one does not, this is a skin, skin scent. This is, you're only gonna smell it if you're really, really up close. And why I say that is like, cause I've worn it a, a handful of times and every time I wear it, I can't smell it. I can't smell it anytime, anywhere. Even people, I ask people, I've asked a few people if they can pick it up on me and they don't, they say no. So uh, it's something really soft, really intimate. This is a, this is a sexy time fragrance, if you know what I mean. Um, I feel like that's when it would really shine. But other than that, it's really soft. The atomizer though is dope, man. It's dope. It's like a chocolatey, dry, medicinal, herbal, it's sexy. It really is sexy. It's just a little soft. I still have yet to try this with the ISOE Super, and I'm gonna try it uh, here eventually if it cools down a little bit. But uh, yeah, right now it's it's not high on my list because it's so soft. All right, so this is the next blind buy fail, and this is Vetiver by Guerlain. So I might get a lot of backlash for this, but um, I wore this three times now. The first time I was a little sick. Okay, I'll, I'll admit I was a little sick and so it was a little much for me. And then the second time I wore it, I wasn't sick, but um, I, I felt it was like, it has this like animalic kind of smell to it. And so I bypassed it. And then the third time I wore it, same thing, same thing. I did look up the fragrance notes and it does have civet in there. And that's, I guess that's animal fur or whatever it is, or I, I don't know what is in here, but um, it's a very class, it, this thing has been around for the millennia. It, it is a very well-known, very popular fragrance. And I understand that, I understand that completely. It might not be everybody's cup of tea, but I wore it like three times now and it's hard for me to spray this on again. I would much rather wear Oud for glory rather than this one. It's a very classy gentleman vetiver fragrance. And so it's got like a lot of lavender, vetiver, but, uh, and a lot of citruses too, but uh, it's a very classy, elegant man. Um, I just find it really hard. Something in here is like super potent to my nose and it just disrupts my nose ways. All right, so the last one on the list, and this is a blind buy success. Actually, this is probably the best blind buy that I've ever made. This is Mercedes-Benz Club Black. And this was one of my first like um, fragrances that you guys recommended me here on the channel. And so thank you again. And also, if you have any recommendations, put them in the comments. I'm always looking to explore new fragrances. I am a fragrance enthusiast, so I get on nothing but enthusiasm. <laughs> enthusiasm. Anyway, this is creamy vanilla. It's got a little bit of a smoky nuance. It's got an incense note in here. It's super pleasant. It's a very smooth, well-rounded vanilla. This one does wonders when you layer it with uh, fragrances. Um, I, even these two would really work well together. I don't know exactly how that would come across, but um, you know, hey, I'll give it a shot. But it's a very smooth, creamy, smoky vanilla. 
It's a very linear fragrance, I find. It's nothing like that changes drastically, the up and down and nuances and valleys. It's nothing kind of like that. It's just kind of like vanilla, smokiness, some woods, and a little bit of a fresh vibe in there. But that's pretty much it. It was one of the best blind buys that I've ever made. Seriously and seriously. And considering it was like, you know, 50 bucks, that's pretty good blind buy, I think. I think that's a good blind buy price. Blind buying can always be risky, but these were my 10 that worked out and didn't work out. If you guys like fragrance-related content, hit the subscribe button. I would love to have you back. We'll see you next time.